be live. This was not live all the time. All right. So check this out. Philippians 2.10. God says, every knee will bow. And let's read that. That's so powerful. Let's read it again. Philippians 2, 9 to 11. Therefore, God, who? The Father, exalted him to the highest place. Who? Him, the Son. Come on. Who? The Son. Who is the Son of God? The flesh that is subjected to the Spirit of God. Ah, the flesh that is led by the Spirit. These are the sons. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place. Is it not written? They are seated. Where are we? In heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Stronger each day. Oh, Father, I feel your presence. I love you so much. Ephesians. Ephesians 2, verse 6. Come on now. Ephesians 2, verse 6. Verse 5 to 7. All right, where are we here with this? Um, right, seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And he made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in our trespasses. What is trespasses? Transgression of the law is what? Sin. Our sin. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Can I go and come back very quickly? I'm going, okay? I'm coming back. Verse 7. In order, uh, what? Verse 6 of Ephesians 2. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, verse 7, in order that in the coming ages he might display the surpassing riches of his grace, demonstrated by his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. All right, hallelujah. So we are where? We're already seated in the highest places. So if God is for us, who could be against us? We're going to go there in a while. If God is for us, who could be against us? We're looking as well into, I can do all things. We're, do, we're looking as well into a friend of this world, this enemy to God. So we're looking at the things that we eat and drink and sleep. All right, the things. We don't want the things. For the things, well, we don't even need to go there, do we? We do? Okay. For the things that are seen is what? Temporary. Okay. And he who is a friend of God is what? A friend. Um, who, he, how do I say this? He was, he accounted Abraham. He, it, okay. He called Abraham friend. He called Abraham friend. I'm here so much, right? Okay. He called Abraham friend. It was accounted unto Abraham righteousness by faith. So we're coming back, you know what? I'm coming back in a little while, right? Let me just give me a sec. I gotta run there and just ah, get the washroom before they close. Give me the keys. Where are the keys? Here we go. I'll lock it here as well. Give me a sec, I'll be back. Go get some water or something. Cry up my heart. This love you more.
अब ये ना पता because it's too long exactly not so long yeah <laughs> anyway all right All right. So where were we? Sorry, that did I take long? I hope I didn't take very long. I have to go on the other side. But um. All right. So where were we? Romans. Okay. So the last thing we heard him saying was it was accounted unto him for righteousness. So that's Abraham, right? And what? How? What is God well pleased by? Faith. So what are each one of us worshiping God through? Faith, right? We're 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 believing on God. We are, um, it's our belief. It's our um decision. It's our choice to worship the Lord and the beauty of holiness in in through the blood of the Lamb. Or we could have been uh, some other crazy thing in the world, right? We could have been uh like uh I don't want to say a saint, okay, a Hindu or a Islam or a Buddhist or an atheist or we could have been any one of those things and not worship God in the beauty of holiness, but we do it because why? We are his people and his spirit beckons us to worship. <sighs> okay. Romans 4, 22. Romans 4, 22, reading the before and after. Or we can read Genesis 15, 6. Mm. Let me think about that. Let's read Genesis 15, 6. It talks about Abraham and Abraham we're talking about here. So this is what God wants. God wants a billion people like Abraham. <laughs> he had faith. That's what God wants. That's the ideal thing that God wants. But listen, Genesis 15, 5 to 7. Not, and the Lord took him outside and said, look to the heavens and count the stars if you are able. And then he declared, so shall your offspring be. Verse 6, Abram believed God, and it was credited to him, it was credited to him as righteousness. He what? Believed. So this is what sets apart the children of Israel, that is, those who worship the one true living God, especially the army that was in Joshua's days, right? So they were men of valor, mighty men. They were give me men of valor. What am I saying? What? Those are the giants. Um, the children of Israel were men, circumcised men, men of God, holy men. They knew the power of their God, all right? Ooh, okay. Ooh, giants. Yeah, okay. Uh, we're going to read. We're, I'm going to come back. So we're going to read what he gave, and then I'm going to come back to it. So the Lord took him outside and said, look, now look to the heavens and count the stars if you are able. And then he declared so shall your offspring be. And Abram believed God. It was credited to him righteousness. Through what? That belief, which is called what? Faith. He, had, he, had, he hadn't seen his descendants um, like this, the, the heavens and the, star, um, and the, the sand on the seashore. He, hasn't, he hadn't. He was in his old age. He didn't even have a child. How could that be? All right. So check this out. All things are possible with God. Here's what he says. Abram believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Verse 7. The Lord also told him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. So does God want to bless his people? Of course. And when his people are faithful to God, even when they are not faithful, God is still faithful. But God loves that thing called faith. He loves it. All right? So we're looking at, he called Abraham friend. James 2.23. James 2.23. And it says in verse 22 to 24, you see that his faith, was working with his actions and his faith was perfected by what he did 
And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. As you can see, a man is justified by his deeds and not by faith alone. That's verse 24. Did you hear that? As you can see, a man is justified by his deeds and not by faith alone. So God says, listen, it's good that you hear the word. It's good that you believe the word. But even Satan hears the word and believes the word. He knows it's true. So what makes you different between him and you? You both believe. Ah, it's your actions. Hallelujah, Father. All right. So that's what he called us to be hearers and doers, right? Okay, so he says the things that are seen are temporary. But the things that are unseen are eternal. So this army in 2 Kings 6 verse, um, I think 16, yeah, Ver verse 16 onwards. Well, that army that they're seeing there, it's what? It's unseen. It is the, in the spirit of the Lord. You can see that. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 17 to 18. For our light and a temporary affliction is producing for us an eternal glory that far outweighs our troubles verse 18 so we fix our eyes not on what is seen but what is unseen for what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is what is eternal hallelujah all right then the next thing we heard was a friend of this world is an enemy to God. So a friend of God is what? A friend of God. <laughs> a friend of this a friend of this world is an enemy to God. So a friend of this a friend of God is it's good. It's a good place to be. James 4:4. 4, 4, that's how we ended up looking at Abraham and how he became a friend of God, right? James 4:4. 4, 4, 3 to 5. And when you do ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. That you may squander it on your pleasures. Is that what you want it for? Verse 4. You adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? So when we ask for something. And it's always to the glory of the Father. He always gives it to us. Check this out. Hey, that's glass. Ah, I almost spliced my finger. All right. So he says in verse 4 of James 4, You adulteresses, you do, you not, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? Therefore, whoever chooses to be a friend of this world Amalek, Amach, Amalek, Anach, Anach, descendants of Anach, giants. Okay, we're going we're gonna to look at that in a while. Okay, let uh, James 4, 4, you adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? So what did he do? They went from being a people of God to a people of not God, and it's, it, God doesn't like that. Therefore, whoever chooses to be a friend of this world renders himself an enemy of God. Automatically, you qualify. Verse 5, or do you think the scripture says without reason that the spirit he caused to dwell in us yearns with envy. That never ceases to amaze me, you know? I love that word. It's powerful. Now, um, the next thing we heard is I could do all things in Christ. So, if God is on your side, if God is for us, it could be against us. Come on now. Philippians 4, 13. I could do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Is God on your side? Yes. What is he doing? He's equipping you for what? For the battle, which is raging even now. All right. So I'm almost going to go to my clothes too. Hmm. Philippians 4, 12 to 14. I know how to be abased or abased. I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. What is this called? Godly contentment. 
um, go find that godly. I'm gonna type it. Godly contentment. So it's like kind of like you know when things are not the best that it can be, but you're hanging on because you trust God. All right, Philippians, because you know that the storm's not going to last forever. He's going to bring the storm to an end. And then he's going to give good things. So Philippians 4, verse 12 to 14, I know how to be a base. I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I've learned to both be filled and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Verse 13. Whatever sees it, whoever comes against, whatever is required of me, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Verse 14. Nevertheless, you have done well that you share in my distress. Why? Because Jesus said that. He said the body... Um, the body suffers with the body, right? The, the, whatever member of the body, whatever it is, it suffers because we all need each other. But we need each other in the truth. First Timothy 6, make that verse 5 to 11. What is godly contentment? I hear godly contentment is a great gain, something like that, a good gain or something. I don't know, we'll see. Um, give me the King James Version. Oh, my tummy burns. Somebody pray for my tummy. I ate too much spicy. 1 Timothy 6, 5. And constant friction of people, between people of corrupt minds. Corrupted. Messed up. They have a reprobate, a debased mind, who have been robbed of the truth. But listen, why? Because it's what they've been fed. And who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. Ooh, I'm going to be Christian because I can gain what I can gain. I, yeah, 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 money, money, money. Yeah. Verse 6. But godliness with contentment is with great gain. That's what I heard. So God says, listen, you're going to be in me. You're going to be in the truth. You're going to have the truth. The love of the truth is in you. But things might be just as well as the one who's in the world. Like in that, you won't have as many things because you're not, you're not needing any of these things. You have all the things that you need. And besides, I want to give you bigger things. So as long as you have holiness to the Lord, as long as you worship him through the blood of the Lamb, what's going to happen to you? He's going to cause you to prosper. And that's where we read in Uzziah, whenever he obeyed the Lord, he prospered. Whenever he sought the Lord, he prospered. Okay? It's cracked my nail really hard on that piece of glass, you know? Anyway. So he said in verse 6, but godliness with contentment is with great gain. Verse 7, for we brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out of it. Verse 8, but we have food and clothes. If we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. And God so clothed the birds and the trees and the valleys and everything else, the animals. Listen, the, the sparrows are sold for two pennies or something like that. We are worth more than sparrows. How much more is his eyes upon us and the things that we need? All right, so now we're going now, now to the battle. All right, now that we have all this gear, let's take it into battle. Joshua 10. This is going good. This is exciting, isn't it? Who can say the Bible is boring? Are you kidding me? What book are you reading? Um... So we're reading from verse 6 of Joshua 10. And the men of Gibeon sent to Joshua to the camp of Gilgal, saying, Slap not thy hands from thy servants and come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. Verse 7. 
so Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. Oh, so I read it right in the, okay, yeah, the mighty men of valor. I said it and then I doubted it. See, I, I just came on like, oh, no, not the mighty men of valor. Oh, yeah, that's exactly where it was. He and all the people of war with him, all the mighty men of valor. And verse 8, the Lord said unto Joshua, fear them not. Why do I think this is giants here or descendants of? We, we're going to check out that. Okay, remind me. Um, Let's do it right now and fast. Give me a second. Descendants of Anna. Descend. Guns of Anak. Alleluia. Kimala Kilohinu. In Genesis 6, I don't know why I keep hearing descendants of Anak. So we're going to find that. We're going to see what the Lord gives. That's right, we took down giants. What in the name of ugly is that? A monkey with red eyes like light beams or something. Oh, what in the world? Let me I'm looking for Genesis six, please. The Edomite. Yaola, Azola, Alleluia, Kimala, Kilohinu. Where are you? I don't, I don't, okay. Anakites. All of that. All right. In Joshua 10 14, um, 15 14, sorry, 10 14. Joshua 15 14. Do I have a snack or something? I'm hungry. I'm empty here. I'm full, but I'm empty. And my body needs some kind of something to go on. According to the Lord's command to him. Joshua 15, verse 13. Joshua gave Caleb, son of Jephunneh, a portion among the sons of Judah. Here, he, mm, Kiri ki I got on but Kiri R Ki Father in heaven help me here Kiri R Arbo Kiri Arbo something like that that is Hebrew Arbo was the forefather of Anna Oh where do we see that again Bish 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 Arba. Remember? Arba was the forefather of Anak. It was giants. Oh! Woo! Sharpen the swords! That word that we got before. Um, it's also B. Bershab, bar, 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 or something. Beth, bra, bra, or something. Bar, bar, bar. <laughs> this word, Arba, was there. Remember? Arba was the forefather of Anak, which means they were they were big men. They were giants. All right, verse fourteen. Oh, I gotta roll my skis. My skis to this one. Verse fourteen. And Caleb drove out from there three sons of Anak, the descendants of Shishai, Ahiman, and Talmai, my, Talmai, the children of Anak. Man, where'd you get these names from? From there, he marched against the inhabitants of Debir, formerly known as Kiriath-Sefer. Descendants of Anna. Oh, now it makes sense. Now, is it making sense now? Check this out. That's why they were in the mountains. There were giants among them. Aha. All right. So verse 8. And the Lord said to Joshua, fear them not. 
for I have delivered them into thine hands. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Every knee will bow, amen. And if you are tapped into that power, woo, if you are tapped into the power that is Jesus Christ, his spirit is with you. If God is for you, who could be against you? Did we find that? I don't know if we found that. Did we find that? I don't remember if we found that. Romans 8.31 What shall we say? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Okay, check this out. Romans 8.30-32 And it says, And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. And those he glorified, he also equipped. And those he equipped, he brought them to victory. All right, verse 31. I'm sorry, I added on the equipped, all right? Verse 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who could be against us? Or what could be against us? Some of those things are not whose, they're what's. Verse 32. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, give us all things freely? All right, so what do they require right now? They require victory. Is God going to give it to them? You betcha. All right, so I'm getting excited. Verse 8, And the Lord said to Joshua, Hear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand, and there shall not a man of them stand before thee. Verse 9, Joshua came, Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly. Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly. I'm laughing at my words, I... I wrote down that I heard in the spirit. I thought the uh, Amorites came upon him suddenly. Therefore, Joshua came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. Verse 10. And the Lord discomfited them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them all along the way that go up to Beth Huron and smote them to Azika and Makade Makeda Makeda and verse 11 and it came to pass that as they fled before Israel and were in the going down to Beth Huron the Lord cast down with great stones from heaven upon them unto Azika who helped God helped, hallelujah. Ooh, and they died. I heard, that's what I heard, hailstones. And there were more, I see Sodom. When I when I see when I hear hailstones, I see Sodom. But there were more which died with hailstones. There were more which died with hailstones. Hailstones, there we go. Than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. So who fought the battle? God. Verse 12, then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. He said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the land of Ajalon. Hallelujah, Father. Whew. Verse 13, all my pores are just raising them. I'm weak in the body, but I'm strong in the spirit. Come on. Verse 13, and the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Whew. Is this not written in the book of Joshua? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hastened not to go down about a whole day. Glory to God. Father says, I will fight your battle for you, my beloved. I 
will bring your enemies to naught. He says, I will deliver them into your hands this day. Be still and see the Lord. See the hand of the Lord fighting before you. Amen. What happened? Joshua delivered. Um, Joshua delivered. I'm seeing Joshua. God, the God of Joshua, delivered the children of Israel from their enemies. Hallelujah. All right. And check this out. And verse 14. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of man. Hallelujah. And for the Lord fought, with is fought for Israel. Hallelujah. And Joshua returned and all Israel with him unto the camp of Gilgal. But these five kings fled and hid themselves in a cave at Makeda. And it was told Joshua, saying, The five kings are found hid in the cave at Makeda. 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 I don't know. Makeda. And it says, Joshua said, roll great stones upon the mouth of the cave and set men by it for to keep them. Verse 19, and stay not, stay ye not, stay ye not, but pursue after your enemies and smite the hindmost of them. Suffer them not to enter into the cities, for the Lord your God has delivered them into your hand. Wow. Okay, and it came to pass when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of slaying them with very great slaughter. They were till they were consumed that the rest which remained of them entered into fenced cities. They ran. And all the people returned to the camp to Joshua at Makadah in peace. None moved his tongue against the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Check this out. So they, they destroyed their armies. And now... And verse 22, and Joshua, and then said Joshua, open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings unto me, out of the cave. Verse 23, and they did so, and brought forth those five kings out unto him, out of the cave. And the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Elrond. And when it came to pass, they brought those kings out unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said unto the captains of the men of war, which went up with them, come near and put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near. They put their feet upon the necks of them. And Joshua said unto them, fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage. Verse 25 of Joshua 10. Be strong and of good courage, for thus, for thus shall the Lord do to your enemies against whom ye fight. And afterward, Joshua smote them and slayed them and hung them on five trees. And they were hanging upon the trees until evening. Mm hmm and we, you, you see that you see that the king of Jerusalem is mentioned. Check this out. Whew. Whoever exalts himself in Jerusalem will be hung. Check this out. Ah, because God is the king of Jerusalem. Amen. Check this out. Verse 27. And came to pass in the evening, in the time of the going down of the sun, that Joshua commanded, and they took them off the trees. And cast them into the cave where they had been hid. And laid great stones in the cave's mouth. Which remain until this very day. Verse 28. And that day Joshua took Mach Machedah and smote it, and smote it with the edge of the sword. And the king thereof he utterly destroyed them. And all the souls that were therein he let none remain. And he did unto the king of Machada, as he did unto the king of Jericho. Hallelujah. Then Joshua passed from Machida and all Israel with him unto Lebna, and fought against Lebna. And the Lord, verse 30, delivered it also, and the king thereof, into the hand of Israel. 
he smote it with the edge of his sword. And all the souls that were therein, he let none remain in it, but did unto the king thereof, as he did unto the king of Jericho. Hallelujah. And Joshua passed from Lebanon into Israel into Lachish, and encamped against this, and fought against the king. What did Joshua do? He bounded the strong man and took out the army. Amen? Check this out. All right. And then from Lachish, Joshua passed on to Elgon and all Israel with him. And they encamped against it and fought against it. And verse 35. And they took it on that day and smote with the edge of the sword. And all souls that were therein, he utterly destroyed that day according to all that he had done in Lachish. And Joshua went up from Elgon and all Israel with him to Hebron, and they fought against it. Verse 37, And they took it and smote it with the edge of the sword, and the king thereof, and all the cities thereof, and all the souls that were in, left none remaining until he had done to Elgon, but destroyed it utterly. So all the kings, all the kings, each one of them, whew, Okay, up until verse 43, and Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, unto the camp of Gilgal. All right. What a thing. Hallelujah. The battery's going again in this. Ah, I got, I got 20 minutes. That's a lot. You know, the Spirit of the Lord is moving. I don't know if I can. I can just, maybe I can cheat. So, 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 no, no, no. So we're going to just turn this up like so, and turn this up like so, and just put this like so. All right. Hallelujah. All right. Here we go. And Joshua returned and all of Israel with him unto the camp of Gilgal. Gilgal. All right. Hallelujah. Let's see what the Lord, what else the Lord has for us. Amen. Woo, what a word, Papa. All right, here we go. Proverbs. Where'd it go? Ay, yeah, no. Not good, not good. I'm sorry. Stay. Please stay. Let me stay. Yeah, let me stay now. There we go. That's going to work, right? Kind of. Kind of perfect. Whew. That's not going to work. All right. So we're just going to tie it up here now. We're going to wrap it up. We're going to try and wrap it up. Hey, stop. Think about it. All right, hallelujah. Oh, okay. Once it doesn't fall. All right, so I had Proverbs 21 in front of me, and I don't know where it went. So I'm just going to find it here, Proverbs. The Lord is an unfailing God. He will always, always stand with his people. He will always bring them to victory. He will always lead them in the way, because he is the way. He is the truth. He needs the life. He is the shepherd. Now, Father, Father showed us this. Just wow. This, I mean, this thing like wow. You know, I'm just like wow. Okay, just a second. Proverbs 21. Can I have that? The Lord loves a heart that loves Him. He loves a heart that loves Him. He will always bring it to fruition. He will always bring it to some kind of a victory. Proverbs 21, it says, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Like the rivers of water, he turns it where he wishes. But every way of man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord weighs the hearts. To do justice and right, to do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. 
Verse 4, a haughty look, a proud heart. The plowing of the wicked are sin. The plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty. So plenty. But, do, but, but those of everyone who is hasty, surely to poverty. Verse 6. Getting treasures by a lying tongue is the fleeting fantasy of those who seek death. You heard that? The way of a man seems right unto him. It's destruction. All right. Verse 7. The violence of the wicked will destroy them because they refuse to do justice. So... As we read, okay, in verse 8, the way of a guilty man is perverse, but as for the pure, his work is right. Verse 9, better to dwell in a corner of a house top than a house shared with a contentious woman. Verse 10, the soul of the wicked, even as in a person, but even as in a church, the soul of the wicked desires evil. Imagine if you're going to a church and you're going with your Bible, but everything else that they give, everything else that they give, you, you, you're not finding this in the Bible. You're like, well, where is this in the Bible? Where is that in the Bible? When, and they say, you know, it, it's, it's wisdom. God says, better to dwell in the corner of a house top. Where did Peter pray? On the rooftop. Check this out. Better you go into your closet and pray. Check this out. Verse 10. The soul of a wick of the wicked desires evil. His neighbor finds no favor in his eyes. Verse 11, when the scoffer is punished, the simple is made wise. The wise is instructed, he receives knowledge. The righteous, verse 12, the, the righteous God wisely considers the house of the wicked, overthrowing for their wickedness. Verse 13, whoever shuts his ears to the cry of the poor, will also cry himself and not be heard. Verse 14, a gift in secret pacifies anger and a bribe behind the back, strong wrath. All right, so stop right there. Let's stop, let's stop. So we get the point, right? We get the point. God loves holiness. He loves righteousness. And above all, he loves those who love him. What does that mean? You don't go perversing yourself with others. You don't go perversing yourself with, with so-called gods and those who they have eyes but they can't see. Those who they, they have ears but they can't hear. Don't go after idols. Don't chase paganism. God wants a holy people and a pure people. And when you're a holy and pure people, he's able to work among you. He's able to work in you and through you and for you. Because when, when, when Joshua spoke to the sun and the moon, what happened? They stood still. And what happened? God delivered. God struck the men with blindness. Man, God took over the battlefield. You know, because the men that were fighting were men of valor. They were, they were given over to the Lord. They were strong, not in our muscle strength, but in the strength of the Lord. They wanted to see their Lord glorified. And all the rest of them were what? Pagans. They were pagans. They were worshipping Baal and Hobal and Molech and every other thing that you could, Ishtar and whatever. You bit my uncle. I'll bite you back. Okay. So they were worshipping every other thing. And God said, you know what? My enemies are my enemies, right? God, if you're an enemy of God, woo, fire's coming down. It says it's a fearful thing to ha fall in the hands of an angry God. So if you give, if you make him angry and you give yourself over to another one, then what is he going to do? God forbid we don't get a chance to repent. Amen. Sometimes we get a chance to repent and sometimes we don't. When he's giving you a chance to repent, he wants you on his side before he gives the battle cry. Because when the battle cry is up, hey, there ain't no kneeling on the battlefield in that. You know, now is the time. On the battlefield, it's sword. It's armor. It's the Lord. 
Amen? Because they who are for us are not against us. And those who are against us are not for us. you got to choose this day whom you serve. Joshua was a man of God. He was, a, he was mighty in strength and faith. In his faith. When, remember when Moses sent them to spy out the land? Joshua and Caleb, son of Nun, was the only two who went and did it. God loves people like that. He loves people who would stand and be, yes, Lord. Do not go with me. Uh, still, I'm going to go. I'm going to do what you say. I'm going to, I know that it's right in your eyes. I'm going to do what you say. And he stands up for those who, who, you know, aren't ashamed of him. So, hallelujah. Um, God led Joshua and Israel, the rest of Israel, to victory. And that's all he's going to do to us as well. Whether we have to bring down the giants, whether we have to take a sling and swing it and say, Goliath, come. <laughs> you come at me with sword and, and spear, but I come at you in the name of the living God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This day he will deliver your heads to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. I'll feed your body this day says the Lord, to all our enemies, which side do you want to be on? Which side are you on? God is saying, choose this day whom you serve, because the battle is fierce. But the Lord says, be still and know that I am, and a Lord will fight for you. Amen? I hope this was an encouragement to you. I know it was a blessing to me. Who raises up the warrior spirit, isn't it? Um... So I didn't get all the words right in the spirit, but I got some. And I got the gist of the message anyway. God says he, want, he will fight. He will always fight for his people. No matter how many rise up against him suddenly or not, he will always, he will always bring them to victory. Always. He will always make I will call those who call themselves Jews to come and bow down before you. Thus says the Lord. Now that's your homework. Go find that scripture. <laughs> um... A revelation somewhere, I think. All right, anyway, let's thank the Lord for his word and let's end it, yeah? We've got 15 minutes to spare. Father, I just come in your awesome and most precious name, Jesus. And I just thank you for walking us through that battle. We could see ourselves even with the children of Israel, Lord. You in the front, in the back, in the side, inside, equipping us, completely armoring us, bringing us the victory as we stand there and watch your hands smite those who would rise up against us, Father. We just pray right now that faith, the faith of Joshua would enter into us, that we would have his faith, that the faith of Jesus would always be with us, Father. We thank you and praise you that you are Lord. Be thou glorified forever, Father. Thank you for just your word is so pure and just it, it takes my breath away every time every time thank you for the assurance and the hope that's in you your amazing love yahweh the i am who i am jesus christ there's none beside you yeshua cause us to lift your banner higher still cause us to go do not follow we'll go with you we'll go with you we're walking with you we're, we're walking with you till you're coming, Father. In your holy and most precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Amen, Brother Barry. Was that awesome or was that awesome? That was awesome. Oh, Father is so good. Glory, hallelujah. Bless the Lord and praise him in his holy tabernacle. Amen. He's upon the throne. He's to be exalted. He's God alone. Hallelujah. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.